welcome back to another art project presented to you by Miss Smith, Ashlyn, Aria, and don't mind my oversized sweatshirt and messy hair today because that's how I live now. Um, today we are going to be learning a kindergarten project. It is about primary colors um, and and the art project has um, many items that you can just find around the house. The middle of it is aluminum foil. So you're going to be cutting out an organic shape out of aluminum foil. And then you're gonna be using primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, to make lines around that object, around that shape. So a couple art words that we're gonna learn with this is organic shape, that is a, a, a shape found in nature. It can be curvy, you make it up. And then we're gonna create some lines and then we're going to be tracing that organic shape. You're gonna be mimicking that shape around it with your markers or your crayons or colored pencils or whatever you're using. And you're gonna be using a pattern. So like red, yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue. A pattern is something that repeats. And back to the aluminum foil part, the aluminum foil is actually the focal point and it creates a really cool like reflective area in the middle. The focal point of a piece of art is what your eye goes to first. So you can see how I'm moving it a little bit and you can see the shine of it. So, I, and I use foil because most people have that in their kitchen and um, we're all just trying to do art projects here that kind of keep us busy and engaged, but easy things that we can do around the house, what, what we have around the house. Um, and I think that is it. So now I'm going to show you how to do this project. All right, so here we go. Here's a close up of the project. So you can see the foil, the organic shape foil in the middle. And you need your primary colors with crayons, colored pencils or markers. And we're just gonna make a composition that kind of looks like this today. It's very basic, but it'll keep your kids quite engaged. All right, so we're gonna start off with a white piece of paper whatever you have laying around the house. And you're going to need a piece of foil, about this size. I don't know, that's like the size of a piece of bread. That's really all you need. And so what I did was once, once I ripped it off of the roll of foil, I just cut it in half. So you, you might need to help your kids with this part, but other than that, they should be able to do this art project on their own. So then you take your scissors, and if it's helpful, you can, with a marker, use a Sharpie because it'll, it'll write better on foil. The washable markers you won't be able to see as well. But um, if you want to draw your organic shape on there first, you can, the way you can see it. Or surprise yourself after you're done cutting, and you just start cutting away because then you'll see it, it'll, it'll be like a surprise when you cut it out. Sometimes the scissors get a little hung up around the foil, so you kind of have to go slowly, be patient with the foil. This is not something that we cut every day. It's not a piece of paper. It requires a little bit more focus. And it's okay if maybe you rip it a little bit because then maybe that'll give it a little bit more interesting of a look. All right, so there's my shape. And sometimes the fun thing about making organic shapes is then you can look at it and actually find something like, this kind of looks like a bunny to me. Like here's the face and the ears and the tail and the legs. You can kind of turn it and maybe you find oh, something else. On, like look, here's a ghost, look. It's a ghost, there's his head, he's pointing. Go that way. Here's his other ghostly arm and here's Mom, the bottom of my ghost. I love it. It's okay, it's all right, just cut it out. And I'm gonna share with you Ashlyn and Aria's organic shape. That looks like a birdie. So let's see what, all right, Aria has made, you said it's a bird? Yes. I also no. see a bunny too. It goes. Uh, actually it's a her horse. It's see? a horse. See, that's the mane and then that's, and then that's the neck and then that's the face. Awesome. All right, Ashlyn's still working on hers. While we're waiting on her, I just want to tell oh, you see. that there's two sides to this foil. 
So we got a real reflective side, it's real super shiny, and then a duller side. So you can decide what side you want to show. I'm gonna put the glue on this side, that way the shinier side is showing. And we, I've got some clear glue here today I'm gonna use. Be careful if you're using a glue stick that you don't tear the foil when you rub the glue over it. So I'm just gonna use the um, liquid glue today. And I don't know if you've watched any of my other videos about gluing, but um, I like to use dots, not lots. We'll get there in a minute. But what I'm doing right now is just kinda outlining my organic shape with a line. And then I'm doing dots, not lots. And when I'm through, I close the top of my bottle of glue. And that is all I need. I'm closing the top of my bottle of glue. I'm gonna flip over my shape. And I'm gonna glue it down. Right in the middle of my paper. So, got my organic shape, that's done. I got my focal point. Remember, this is the thing that you're gonna see first. The focal point in a piece of art is the thing that you see first. It's nice and shiny. Now, I've got my primary colors. I'm gonna use markers. You can use something else. And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna create lines around your organic shape, but you have to mimic that shape. So, what I mean by that is just kinda like following that shape. So you're really practicing your tracing with this. Okay, see how I'm doing that? And then go up and around everything. If it's helpful, you can turn your paper as you work. Okay. I'm using the side of my marker. That way it gives me a thicker line. So I'm using the side, not the tip. And then after that, then you move on to your second color. But let me show you Ashland's shape. Now let me tell you something about this. This, this is good. This is very unique. She cut out a lot of different areas right here, but I want to show you something. If you used a Sharpie, see how you see those Sharpie lines right there? That might now, that might now be the back of your art, because do you want those Sharpie lines to show? Probably not. So Ashland might want to be putting her glue on this side and gluing it down like that, that way the Sharpie lines don't show. Hmm. Just a thought, okay? Yeah, I'm okay. All right, showing. now after you have that first primary color on there, now you go with your second one. And I'm gonna start, you can really start anywhere that you want, but just make sure that that second color goes all the way around. It goes all the way. And I'm, again, I'm just kind of following that design. I'm following it along, mimicking the shape that I made with the foil. And again, I like to turn my paper as I go. It's kind of helpful in my hands so that I haven't tried to like reach around. And then you do blue. Turning my paper as I go. Now eventually this whole thing will be filled. All right, so okay. So now, what I want to show you is what you do when you start running out of room. Okay, so I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start right here, and I'm just gonna continue to to mimic those lines. Now I am going to bump the edge of my paper right there, and then just pick it up where I can see I have some space. Not really so much right there. I'm going to avoid that area. I'm going to come. I'm going to jump way over here. So I stop there, bump and jump, go all the way over here, pick up where I left off, and keep going. Mommy, I'm done. Okay. And then same right here. Let's see. So it's going to kind of, kind of a little bit hanging off the page right there, and keep going until the whole page is full. And there you have it. So I would need a couple more rows of red, yellow, and blue there, and then also on the other side as well. But there you go. And that's it. I'd love to see your pictures. You can post them on Facebook. You can send them to me through email, parents. I'd love to see what your kiddos have done. Now I want to show Arias because she's about done with hers. And she also used markers. 
and she took it she uh, approached the project a little bit differently and she did like circles in hers as well so her her pattern is a little bit more detailed than mine it's pretty cool would you call it paint splatters. they're paint splatters but you can see the red yellow and blue she tried to get those patterns in there she repeated it very well done a unicorn. A unicorn? <laughs> Good. Yeah. Can I show yours actually? Yeah. Okay. I messed up on the last slide. Oh. I did blue instead of red. That's okay. All right. So she used crayon. So you can see how you get like a thinner line when you use those crayons. But she also has a really great pattern of red, blue, yellow, red, blue, yellow, red, blue, yellow. And she said she... Red, blue, yellow. Oh, she messed up on the last pattern, so she got she tried to go um, go over. But look what happens when you overlap blue and red. Kind of looks purplish, because that's what blue and red make. Okay, and there we go.